name is Jamie Pratt. I'm the author of this course and CEO of a small company called Pratt EDU that creates these kinds of courses. Now, the way I've got it figured, you're probably already pretty good at financial statements. I bet you understand them pretty well, or you wouldn't be in this course. In my opinion, that gives you a decided advantage, an edge, because no or not, metrics on the financial statements link directly to firm value. And the ultimate key to success is actually, if you manage these metrics correctly, you can drive up the value of your firms. The key to success. Managers that are good at that, they thrive. If you're not so good, well, there's always somebody out there willing to replace you. So together, now, let's go and learn exactly what it means to manage the financial statement metrics in a way that creates firm value. I'll check in with you a little later. What is the value of a company? What can management do to increase it? Is the company's stock reasonably priced? Or is it too high? Perhaps too low? These questions are addressed by this course, and we tackle them through a key performance metric, return on equity, or ROE. After completing this course, you should be able to use the concepts of interest and the time value of money to define the phrase value creation. Or in other words, what does it mean for a firm to create value, which in simple terms means increase its worth. You will then learn how to link value creation to return on equity, ROE, which in turn is affected by management's operating, investing, and financing decisions. You will also see how to use a spreadsheet-based valuation model that relies on the drivers of value creation and ROE to compute the value of Best Buy, the well-known retailer and service provider for electronic devices. Finally, you will be able to describe how this valuation framework should be interpreted and used to make better business decisions, which in part involves conducting sensitivity analyses on the model's key inputs. Step number one in understanding valuation is understanding the concept of time value of money. You see, firms are like cash cows. They churn out cash over time, as long as you keep the cows healthy and productive. What would you pay for a healthy, productive cow? Well, you'd have to sit back and think, well, how much cash flow in the future can this cow produce? And then you'd have to think, well, I need to discount the future cash flows by an interest rate because money has a price and there's some uncertainty about whether or not those future cash flows are actually going to materialize. Predict future cash flows, discount back based on some interest rate that reflects those two factors. That's all basically the concept of time value of money. Pretty basic stuff, but necessary if you want to understand valuation. So what we'll do now is go to a brief tutorial on the time value of money so that by the end of it, we're all on the same page and can work toward really understanding the fun stuff later when it comes to understanding how the firm can create higher levels of value.
So, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's spend a few minutes with this very basic concept, the time value of money. A dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received tomorrow, or for that matter, any time in the future, because if you leave money in a bank for a year at an annual interest rate of, say, 8%, it will grow to $108, 100 times 1.08, or $100 times 1 plus the interest rate, which in this case is 8%. If you leave it for a second year, the $108 will grow to $117. 108 times 1.08. That is, the $8 of interest earned in the first year earns interest in the second year. This process is called compounding, leading to what is called a compound interest rate. Interest is earned on the interest. Leaving the money in the bank for a third year would have it grow to $126, $117 times 1.08. The $17 of interest earned up to the end of year two earns interest during year three. And the compounding would continue for as long as you leave the money in the bank, growing the dollar amount indefinitely. As you can see, Given an annual interest rate, in this case 8%, receiving $100 today is preferred to receiving $100 three years in the future because the $100 received today will grow to $126 in three years. In other words, having $100 today is equivalent to having $126 in three years. If we conduct the same analysis using a 10% rate, you will see that the $133 future value at 10% is greater than the $126 future value using the 8% rate. Thus, an important point, the time value of money grows as the interest rate grows. Periodic cash payments or receipts of equal amounts across time are common in business, like the one illustrated above three $100 payments over a three-year period. And this series of cash flows is called an annuity. The kind of annuity illustrated here is called an ordinary annuity because the cash flows come at the end of each period. Perhaps more common in practice are annuities where the cash flows come at the beginning of each period. These are called annuity dues. It is often useful to compute the future values of both kind of annuities. For example, what would be the future value of a three-year ordinary annuity or a three-year annuity due invested at an 8% interest rate? Here are the calculations and they are simply the addition of the future values of each of the annuity's individual cash flows. Here we see the annuity due is more valuable than the ordinary annuity. $351 is greater than $325, which occurs because compared to the ordinary annuity cash amounts, each annuity due cash amount earns interest for one additional period. Thus, consistent with the theme of time value, it is better to receive money earlier than later. Another useful concept when analyzing the value of cash flows is present value, which targets a future cash amount, say one year in the future, and given an interest rate R, computes its value as of the present time, time zero. For example, what is the present value now of $100 received one year in the future, given an 8% interest rate? Because present value is the opposite or reciprocal of future value, the answer is to multiply the single sum, $100 in this example, by 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate, 8%, which leads to 
the value of $100 received in one year, discounted at an interest rate of 8%. To summarize, given an 8% interest rate, $93 is the present value of $100 received in one year, or $100 is the future value of $93 invested at an 